Star Wars The Clone Wars had plenty of memorable antagonists. Some were borrowed from other Star Wars media such as Count Dooku, General Grievous and Asajj Ventress, but there were also plenty of original ones too, like Cad Bane, Hondo Anaka, and of course, Admiral Trench. Trench only appears in 5 episodes of the show, with 3 of those 5 all part of the Bad Batch arc, but he made a hell of an impression all the same. He's instantly memorable to fans as hideous but compelling, cunning and imposing. But the episode that created this lasting impression doesn't really get the credit it deserves from fans, which is why we'll be discussing it today. In this installment of our series on the most underrated episodes of The Clone Wars, we'll be discussing Cat and Mouse, the 16th episode of Season 2. Attention, Sergeant on deck! Before we begin, we highly encourage you to pause this video and actually re-watch the episode. Don't worry, we'll be waiting for you when you get back. If you've watched the episode just now, feel free to fast forward to the start of the next video chapter here on YouTube. If not, let's quickly recap what happened in the episode. Early in the Clone Wars, a Separatist fleet attempts to lay claim to Christosis, increasing pressure on an outpost commanded by Senator Bail Organa. Anakin Skywalker and a Republic battle group are sent in to break the blockade of the planet and deliver supplies to the surface, but are beaten back by the Separatist commander. As Republic forces regroup, Obi-Wan Kenobi gives Anakin command of a stealth ship to be used to sneak past the enemy fleet and deliver the supplies. Anakin is joined by Admiral Yularen, who recognizes the enemy commander as Admiral Trench. Skywalker and Yularen attempt to sneak past Trench, but once the Admiral sends out bombers against Organa's command post, they redirect their attention to Trench himself. A game of cat and mouse ensues, with the Republic stealth ship making unsuccessful runs on Trench's dreadnought and the Admiral trying to draw them out. The game ends when Skywalker outsmarts Trench, luring the Admiral's own tracking torpedoes right into his bridge. The blockade is broken, and Skywalker heads planetside to relieve Organa. Hello, ugly. I am Admiral Trench. If you are listening, Jedi, you've made a bold move and a grave mistake. I appreciate your decision to face me, ship to ship, to play this little game. It's been so long since I had a worthy opponent. You have an impressive new vessel. But I warn you, I have dealt with its kind before. Your technology will not save you, and your friends on the planet below shall perish as a result of your failure. The people of Christosis and her resources shall join the Separatist Alliance. Turn back now. Retreat while you can, for I am yours. Admiral Trench really steals the show in Cat and Mouse. He's a breath of fresh air compared to the complete lack of subtlety the Separatists usually have in the Clone Wars, with an attitude and air reminiscent of Grand Admiral Thrawn, but still distinct enough for Trench to stand out on his own. He's sharply analytical, able to deduce that he's up against the Jedi just from the fact that the Republic stealth ship wasn't destroyed by a spread of turbo laser fire. He's ruthless, ordering bombers to shell Senator Organa's position to keep up the pressure on the Republic fleet. He's mostly calm and collected, with an icy vibe that oozes competence and superiority. Above all, he's clearly a match for our protagonists, able to outthink them at almost every turn. Trench isn't just given good character traits though, he's given backstory and a clear connection to the protagonists as well. The episode clearly shows us that he's a cunning commander, but we're also told as much by Yularen, who hints at crushing defeats suffered at Trench's hands in the past. We're told that the Admiral has experience with utterly destroying fleets, raising the stakes even more. Perhaps more importantly, we learn that the conflict of the episode has a personal side to it, as Yularen was familiar with Trench and has lost a battle to him in the past. All of this makes Trench even more compelling than he already was. Yularen's past with Trench is another part of what makes him such a great antagonist. Yularen obviously fears Trench, which makes the audience fear Trench as well, albeit to a lesser degree. The episode does this with other characters as well. 
Obi-Wan clearly considers Anakin's plan to attack Trench suicidal, and during Trench's dramatic message to the stealth ship, we get a few quick shots of clones glancing at one another, clearly uneasy. Anakin's the only one who isn't deeply concerned about facing this guy. But what if we were to tell you that a lot of what makes Trench such an awesome antagonist in Cat and Mouse is actually due to how the episode itself is written, not Trench's character? Don't get us wrong, Trench is an amazing character on his own, but what elevates him to the level of god-tier antagonist in Cat and Mouse is how masterfully the episode handles tension. It builds up Trench in waves, gradually raising the stakes and making his character more threatening. The episode starts off with Trench just being a good tactician, and then escalates to Trench bombing Organa to draw out the Republic fleet. From there, it escalates to Trench having shields on his flagship that effectively make him untouchable, and thence figuring out the stealth ship is piloted by a Jedi, and thence to reveal that Trench knows how to destroy stealth ships. Each reveal raises the tension and makes Trench more threatening in the process, until the tension breaks and Trench takes a missile to the face. Cat and Mouse builds tension really well, both as a whole over the course of the episode and in microcosm. Consider the following sequence. 9,000. 8,000. Have they detected us? Can't tell, sir. If we are going on the offensive, we must do it soon. 5,000. 4,000. Stay cloaked. Power everything else down. Better drift. 2,000. They're going to hit us! 500! They missed us. They don't know we're here. Did you notice how that clip made you hold your breath a little and then release it at a specific moment? It's a common technique used in everything from action flicks to romance novels building up towards something the audience knows is coming but has some sort of uncertainty about playing on the audience's anxiety and then releasing it all in an instant. But this episode didn't just have a few quick scenes with the good use of tension. The entire episode was built around the same concept, just on a larger scale than this quick clip. The main dynamic of Cat and Mouse is essentially submarine warfare in space. On one hand, you have the Invincible, Trench's indomitable battleship, which has clear supremacy on the battlefield. On the other hand, you have the Republic stealth ship, a subversive element that can metaphorically slip beneath the waves to avoid Trench's notice. The other ships present, the Republic fleet and the Separatist blockade, might as well not exist. This is really just a duel between the stealth ship and Invincible. This is a classic setup, a David vs Goliath scenario, something that Star Wars does a lot in case you hadn't noticed. The difference between this and other examples of David vs Goliath scenarios is the stealth ship's nature as, well, a stealth ship. Like a submarine, it can effectively hide from its much larger foe. It spends most of the episode hiding, in fact, while the tacticians on both sides plan. This is a big part of what allows the episode to maintain tension, as we're instinctually wired to associate hiding with a feeling of being hunted. This tension is punctuated by brief flashes of action, the hyena bombers being dispatched, Skywalker's first assault on the Invincible and Trench's response, and finally the last showdown between the two ships. The first two flashes raise the stakes, which the rest that follow use to increase the tension, while the last one allows the tension to finally release. By the time the episode reaches its climax, the tension has the viewer anxious to see how it ends. It has also made Admiral Trench into a truly fearsome antagonist, seemingly the equal of Anakin Skywalker, which in turn raises the stakes for the climax even more. It all boils down to Skywalker's last run on the command ship. The first time watching this, it would be anyone's guess how it would end if we didn't know Anakin and Yularen survived intact. Indeed, even knowing that they survived by the climax, the tension is high enough to make the viewer doubt that one inevitability of main characters surviving. We know that Anakin Skywalker is brilliant, but Admiral Trench has matched him at every turn thus far. Could he do it again? Even though we know Skywalker is surely going to win, we can't help but hold our breath even as Trench slips up and leaves himself unshielded to Skywalker's attack. The tension keeps on building, 
right up until Trench closes his eyes and his own missiles slam into his command bridge. In that moment, the tension is released, a moment punctuated by a series of explosions as the Invincible takes some serious damage. And even though we probably knew it was coming, we can't help but feel relieved as the protagonists, and us by extension, are no longer in a position of being hunted. But we still remember the gut feelings that that build up and release gave us, which is a large part of why Admiral Trench is so memorable as an antagonist. Even if he ultimately lost, it was a close call, and he had dominance over the battlefield right up until the very end. We end up walking away from the episode with the same sort of fearful respect that Ularan had for Trench. Compare this to General Grievous as is depicted in the episode Shadow of Malevolence, which revolves around a similar cat and mouse battle but without the excellent use of tension, and you can see how much of a difference it makes in how we perceive the villain. So that's our look back at cat and mouse, but what do you think? Are you excited for next week's video? And what do you think of cat and mouse? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.